Welcome to another episode of the Pierce Brothers. I'm Joe. I'm Porter. And today we're going to be doing a gear spotlight on our hunting gear. Um, so we're both going to kind of dive into some different things that we have that we use every hunting season to help you guys find the right hunting gear for you. So to start off, we're going to dive into some camo because, you know, some places you need some good camo. <laughs> <laughs> I never wear camo except for just whatever's on my pack. Yeah, and you know, Western, that's something to mention though, is Western United States hunting is very different than Eastern United States hunting. But that being said, there are a lot of similarities between the two. So, I know, flies are bad. It's, you know, August in Idaho. So, <laughs> there's a mosquito buzz in my head. Yep. I don't want to get bit on the face. <laughs> so, first of all, I'm actually wearing one here. This is a, uh, this is from Origin USA. The reason I choose Origin for my camouflage is because they are 100% um, sourced, produced, made in the USA. So they buy their cotton right here in the USA. They buy all their materials in the USA. They spin it in the USA. They cut it. They sew it. Everything start to finish is in the USA. So if you want to support a great USA made company, Origin USA. Um, the one I'm wearing here, this is, uh, they've got two different colors in their hunt line. So there's their darker green color for their woodland kind of camo. And then they've got their highland, which is a little more brown and black in there for those high mountain Idaho places. Um, this green one here and the one I'm wearing is a, they call it their Tetra Lock. It's a really lightweight, cool wearing gear for those early season hunts in September. Um, and then this one here is a hooded jacket or a hoodie. It's a real lightweight, great base layer for those cold hunts. This is their nano wool hoodie. And it has what they call their ninja hoodie. So it's got a face mask built into the hoodie if you need to go full concealment or if it's just really cold. Um, and then this one here is their Origin Stealth uh, wool jacket. It's a zip up jacket with a hood. Um, it's nice brush soft wool inside and then the outer has been burned so it's got that kind of rough outer texture but that's a great outer or mid layer um, obviously you get a waterproof they do have their stealth jacket that would go over top of that when it's raining or wet but this is a great option for those really cold cold hunts um, and you know November December when there's feet of snow on the ground mm -hmm. so yeah so for camo, that's our recommendation. Origin USA all the way. They've got a huge selection on their website. And they do sales every year. So watch for their sale coming up. <laughs> I'm a sale guy. I hate paying full price for stuff. <laughs> well, and along the lines of camo, I usually don't wear camo. I usually try to stick with, I have a couple of different pairs of jeans uh, that are plain tan, brown. Um, anyways, and then shirts, usually I stick with the plain tan, browns, uh greens stuff that's just very natural and plain natural um, color obviously i wouldn't go out hiking with a bright blue shirt like this especially here in idaho where there's no law you know against hunter's orange or not um anyway so yeah i'm more of just the plain kind of guy I usually hike and hunt sometimes with a baseball cap sometimes it's just my cowboy hat um i just don't get too caught up into the camo side of things but a lot of guys really do like it yeah so that's you know, all good camo gets expensive which is why i'm a sale guy i got all this <laughs> on sale two years ago been wearing it ever since <laughs> and uh, every year i try to buy another piece or two just for you know variety's sake right yeah, <laughs> i'll just go with a plain sweatshirt of some sort as my base layer and if it's really cold i'll put on just a carhartt big jacket pretty waterproof or water resistant not proof but very water resistant and keeps you warm so yeah that's just kind of my forte but you know every hunting style is different so yep. um, well, let's wanna... talk about packs yeah so last fall i bought myself a i went into cabela's i was kind of looking for a pack but not really my other one i'd kind of wore out over the years and these were on sale there and i was like you know what the heck i might as well buy it it was a cabela's uh, they call it their Outfitter Series Multi-Day 4000. Um, I used it last fall. I didn't get anything, so I wasn't able to pack anything out. But it uh, it's definitely, you know, kind of on the heavier side because it's, it's, yeah, it's more a built of like in a frame, you know, so it's yeah. not like it's a non-frame pack. Yeah, it's built in frame and everything, so it's supposed to be pretty robust. Um, 
lots of different pouches and pockets one big pouch for you know your 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 main stuff um but i really like it so far from right it was very comfortable i always carry quite a bit of water and other stuff with me so it's already pretty heavy to begin with when i start my day um something i do like about it is as you can see here uh since i'm a farrier or horse farrier i have to have good back support <laughs> <laughs> and right here this big foam right here you tell me what's that that's a lifesaver for me my other pack didn't have that <laughs> yeah. well especially and, when you get weight in there you know and you're packing meat out uh -huh. having that yeah. padding on that lower back yeah, where that belt rides yep and uh something else i really like about it that is just a stupid thing but a lot of guys are like oh that, that doesn't matter it has this little pouch here and i really like to stuff in like a few extra rifle rounds right there yeah. so that way i'm not digging through my pack like hey where's my extra rifle rounds if i ran out of ammo or something or yeah. whatever it's very convenient i know exactly where that pouch is it's filled up with five or ten rounds i'm good to go and uh anyways so yeah just very stupid but it's very uh very useful you know uh yeah. those little little gadgets on a pack really help you be able to use them better yeah so mine is from uh alps outdoors outdoors spelled with a z on the end they're also a usa based company family owned company as well um, I bought this at Sportsman's a year or two ago. It's just a nice uh, frame pack. They do sell some accessory like packs that you can put on there, but uh, where it is a frame pack, I wanted to get something that was just lightweight I could put on there. So this is a uh, kind of a go bag from Midway USA. It's got some AR mag pouches, but I just put uh, like a poncho and some other basic supplies in there, a flashlight, some of the toilet paper, <laughs> always yeah. important. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> have to have toilet paper yeah. <laughs> but it's just a, it's a sling pack so if i do get an animal i strap it all on here and i just sling this over so it hangs in the front and it's out of the way but that way i've got the whole frame to mount that meat on and uh get out um it's a nice steel frame it's lightweight and yet uh really strong and then like porter said you got good back support pad here but then you also have a side pouch on each side I usually put one of my elk calls in one and then some extra handgun ammo and uh, mm -hmm. and my gloves. Cause you know, when you start in the morning, it's a little cool sometimes. And then it but that gives, up. Yeah, it gives me a spot <laughs> to stick my gloves without having to take my pack off. Cause I hate, tacking my, I hate taking my pack on and off all day. Um, all right. So yeah, that's my pack that I chose when I was pack hunting yeah. a few years back or pack. Well, and <laughs> I was talking about Hunter's Orange. This pack came with this and um, obviously when you're hunting it's probably not a bad idea to have the hunters know that you're there but especially when you shoot a deer or an elk or something you're packing out those I, horns yeah. put that to the horns somewhere i mean there's so many idiots i hear so many accidents up, yeah. up in the country where i go hunting of other ranchers and everything i had a rancher one time he said he had his he was riding a buckskin horse during elk season but he was up there it was like mid-september he's checking cows getting cows pushed from one pasture to the next some hunter shot the horse out from underneath him yeah. it's like I'm sorry, but there's no excuse for that as a hunter, like at all, ever. Yeah. I mean, I don't care if it's a buckskin horse or not. A, a rancher's up there gathering cows, moving cows, and his horse got shot, shot right out from underneath him. It's like that. Yeah, it, it's it's a zero excuse, you know. If you're going to be hunting, be responsible. Confirm your yeah, confirm your, your target. Shooting, yeah, what you're exactly. Shooting at. <laughs> not only that but you know if you're hunting buck versus doe versus elk versus deer you know like if you mistake yeah. a horse i mean it's like <laughs> what are you doing out there with a gun and a <laughs> yeah you and a hunting license. License. so yeah so, yeah um let's talk about uh footwear oh what yeah brand are your boots there for north side north side uh i bought these like oh golly six years ago or so They've held together really well. It's gonna say for six uh, years of use. They are waterproof. <laughs> I you can step in water. I've done it up to here on them before they'll start leaking. So it gives you, you know, there's a lot of small mountain streams and creeks you'll have to cross. It it gives you about four inches, wouldn't you say? Yeah, four inches of you know, hey, you don't want to have wet feet, but you can step into water and not get wet. Right. Um, very lightweight too, and that's a, a huge plus for me. Um. And then also the fact is, is uh, the thin slate. Um, I don't need Limits. a whole lot. Yeah. These ones I think are six, I believe, four or six. Um, I forget the thin slate rating on them, but there's a lot of guys will tell you, oh, you need like 800 or a thousand or something. And my feet, my personal thing is, is 
my feet are always warm uh -huh. and so i can be out in 20 degrees with cowboy boots on and and wool socks i'm fine so i think it just depends on your body at the moment but yeah. i usually shoot for like that four to six hundred weights of fensilate um that seems to work pretty good for myself yep so i carry a or i use a vivo barefoot boot um i bought them from optics planet they're a minimalist style boot so they're really lightweight and uh, I, I did hike Mount Bora in these that yeah way. Mount Bora so, so they, they do work good that way anyway, sorry it wasn't yeah no I mean yeah. you're good so that's uh that's what I use and I I'm very much a minimalist with my feet I don't like a lot of weight or a lot of bulkiness so I like to have that lightweight so um, dry sleek and shoe and yeah that's warm sleek boot so on the cold cold days yeah let's talk binoculars uh well you guys already know what I like I got my Sig Sauer key, Kilo 3000s um that's my primary hunting binocular until someone comes out with something better and i can afford it yeah they that's work. the one thing you know is affordability you got optics and that you can spend a lot of money <laughs> yeah those ones i think i got them on sale for nine i believe it was which oh. it's not i mean it's not terrible especially for all the ballistics range finding and everything else capabilities yeah. of them but, but that's a benefit is having the range finder and binoculars two in one so you don't carry two different things i, I did do two different things for a while yeah that's what i it's feel no do. good so <laughs> it's no good you, you miss out on too much game if yeah. you have to switch, having to back, switch and back and forth, and forth. And yeah too much movement too much time in between and uh so yeah i'm very much like try to just streamline things make it simpler and uh yeah, a lot of guys carry around their Kestrel ballistics and all that, and it's like, you know, you don't... I I mean, from an ethical standpoint, in my opinion, you know, like, most big game shots are shot between two and 400 yards. Yeah. You get out there five, six, seven, eight hundred yards, it starts getting very hit and miss whether you're actually going to anchor the animal. Yeah. Um, you know, you know and ethics that's important you know yeah be smart and know your know your limitations yeah know so. your limitations and i know there's guys that will do go out and shoot them at thousand twelve hundred even a mile and it's just not personal opinion i don't think it's very ethical so no. personal opinion they're not it's not <laughs> yeah. the opinions of everyone obviously yeah. i'm gonna get a lot of <laughs> flack for saying that but you know uh i just don't think so yeah so. agreed so I haven't been able to afford a fancy set of binoculars or bifocals <laughs> like Porter. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, something I always carry with me even when I'm hunting is a call, uh, specifically a coyote call. This is the Primo's, what do they call it, the hot dog. Port's always looking for coyotes. Uh, well, coyotes, <laughs> you, can, you can bring in wolves, bears, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, works very well. Uh, I always have it with me just because if I'm really not seeing very many deer or whatever, I'll stop and make a set on <laughs> coyotes for yeah. a moment, you know. <laughs> um, and then another thing, a couple of things I like to always carry with me is I, uh, a deboner uh, for bone saw. bone saw, yeah. So you can you can cut through bones when you need to. So yep. For knives, we both have a smaller size knife. I carry two. Yeah. <laughs> I carry a uh, Montana Knife Company Speed Goat. Ultra lightweight. It weighs like two ounces or less than two ounces. Uh, it's made out of 52100 uh, ball bearing steel. So very lightweight. has great edge retention. And uh, I love that lightweight because especially when you start throwing an animal in your pack, pack it out, every ounce counts. So right. lightweight Montana knife company, also USA made and sourced company. So all handmade USA made right there in the great state of Montana. Yeah, I carry around two knives at the same time because I've done out uh, elk and the knife starts getting a little dull halfway through. You switch knives because you don't want to be worried about it too much. But I carry around a cold steel, I don't can hunt, uh, mini hunter as they call it. Uh, had this thing since I was like 14, like young. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, it's it's had its fair share of game that I've cut up. And then I always carry around my buck knife. This is just an El Cheapo, but it holds an edge pretty well. And that's just my backup if that one starts going too dull on me. But I also carry around my knife sharpener. It's very, <laughs> just, uh, in case. just in case if you, you know, if the wife and me get something down at the same time, you know, to just take an extra five seconds and just swipe that blade a few times you're good to go so yeah um 
I think that covers everything we got. As far as a uh, holster, I carry this chest holster yes. from uh, Gunfighter Inc. We just had a gear spotlight drop on these last week, so if you want a more in-depth look at those, go take a look at that gear spotlight from last Friday. Uh, but this is my M and P 10 millimeter. I typically bow hunt um, in September in that, and so I'm carrying 10 millimeter in case I run into wolves or bear or something. But um, typically not. You're gonna have too many bears chasing. I yeah, know, but yeah. Bears, unless there's grizzlies on the other side of the state. Yeah, but wolves are a pretty big concern in this yeah. area. I've seen a lot of wolf tracks out bow yeah, hunting. A lot so. of people get stalked by those and cats a lot too. So yeah, yeah. Be careful. 15 but. rounds of the lord or not the lord's caliber that's the acp but uh 15 <laughs> rounds of uh 1200 feet per second ought to do it <laughs> right yeah um, <laughs> so that's typical day pack of yeah. stuff you know i always have on a, a shoulder rig as well you know with my black hawk either my my 45 or my 357 black hawk typically yeah sometimes i'll put on my smith and wesson mountain gun that's i only have a hip holster for that but yeah. um I think that's pretty much most day yeah. day gear. I can even stay overnight if I have some food and water with me. I'll stay overnight if I need to. But yeah. you know, snuggle up against a tree and cover yourself in pine needles. Yeah. <laughs> well, and on that note, you know, western hunting in Idaho, we're not sitting in a tree stand or a deer blind. You know, we're out traveling, hiking hundred miles in four days. You know, it's a it's yeah. a long, hard week. And yeah. Western United States hunting, yeah, it's way different than. Eastern. Mm -hmm. That being said, I am. I would love to do an Eastern United States hunt, sitting on a tree stand with my bow. So, <laughs> oh, and also matches. I always have matches with matches you. Matches and trouble, and if you have to stay out overnight or and weather turns off too cold, you can always start yeah. a fire and keep warm. Yeah, and in my pack, I've got a little basic uh, first aid kit here that I just keep some basic emergency supplies. You know, because first aid is often overlooked, and mm -hmm. uh, that's hugely important. You know, especially being out in the mountains and that. Mm -hmm. You never know when you might, even skinning an animal, you, know, you might yeah, become blood brothers. Hand. So, yeah, uh, I might slice your hand for a sec. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I think that's, that's pretty that's much the it. basics. Yeah. So, yeah. so, a good day pack and Western United States hunting gear. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks for watching this episode of the Pierce Brothers, and we'll see you next time.